Hey, there's this uh, Luke Combs song. Um, I was just upstairs with Dan Miller. He does a great job. He's right there. Um, <laughs> God, uh, I looked up your Wikipedia page. So good to I like people's stories. <laughs> <laughs> your dad watched every game. Yeah, yeah growing up. Fan, <laughs> no, but anyway, he was saying something, and he's, you know, talking about it. We were just talking about football coach and all that. And there's this Luke Combs song that says, doing this. And so then after the thing, the interview with him, I went up there and I put it on. And, you know, Luke Combs is talking about, you just can't believe it. You know, and the reporters ask him, what would you be doing if you weren't doing this? And he's like, well, that's the thing. I'd be doing this um, right here. It might not be on this stage uh, in front of the Detroit Lions logo with all you guys here, but it might be at a high school or whatever. But ultimately, man, we're here and uh, blessed and feel good about it. So we're excited. I mean, this is really why you coach. Um, is an opportunity to go play against Baltimore in a big game where they're good on special teams and all that stuff, so it should be fun. Now, yeah. Luke Combs also has another song. It's called The Part. Part. Yeah, you guys know what he talks about on that one? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ironic. So then he's like, yeah, <laughs> but there's also this other part, you know, that no one talks about, you know, those other things that you got to do in your jobs that, you know, you aren't fired up about or whatever. But So it's that other part, too, and no one talks about that part. They talk about the songs that, you know, bottom the fancy cars and all the good stuff. They don't talk about the grind and the staying up late and the, you know, he's on the road and doesn't get to get back home. But anyway, so that's it. I love music, man, and my favorite part of music is the stories. It's the same thing I love about these players, all the stories. But okay, enough. All right, you guys. Have you really be coaching? You wouldn't be doing the fly fishing thing or the, you know? Yeah, I like fly fishing too, but no, I, I could. I mean, this is it, man. I love it. You know, I always say, um, you know, I can't wait to retire or something like that. But I, I mean, there's no way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry. I just no Luke Combs related questions. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, a lot of people asked during the game, and I, I just didn't have an answer for them, the, the Jack Fox, uh, Riley Patterson kickoff decision. What, what goes into that for you with both of them being capable of doing it? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. I thought that would come up there. Um, I thought it would catch you off guard, too, a little bit. It did. Um, but I apologize. <laughs> no, um, for us, it, it's a thing that he's been working hard on. I think a while back I had said that part of the reason why he was here is because he had the ability to both kick off. Um, and kick field goals, and that really is true. And then for him, it's something he's worked hard at. It's something we know that at some point there may be a time where he has to do that for us, and if he has to do that for us. Because at the end of the day, Fox is exceptional at it. Um, he's outstanding. He's got an incredible leg. And it's like, well, why are you having Fox kick off? Well, because he's one of the best, and I've always said it's about winning games. And um, putting the best players out there to play. So ultimately, that's kind of why he does it uh, game to game. Um, but for us also, it's kind of like we talked about earlier in the year, you know, learning how to cover kicks. Well, what happens if there's a necessity at some point and Fox is not able to do that for us, then what are we going to do? And so it was a good opportunity to get Riley ready for that. Um, we didn't have to do it, but uh, we thought the conditions would be good. We knew we were going to have to kick both right and left with the wind and all that stuff, and he, he does a good job of both of those things. And So anyway, it's just a good opportunity to use them. We'll see. Probably, probably a combination of both at some point. It just kind of depend, but I would say for the most part, Foxes are you know, probably the number one guy, but I, I see both guys being able to do it. Leaf, I think, returned two punts from inside the five last week. He's done a couple times this year. Can you just walk through, like, the when and where and why is of when you do and don't do that, I guess? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's probably it's, – it's a tough question to answer just because I think it changes week to week a little bit. You know, in that game, a couple of those things were super long punts, 60-some yard punts where you know you're getting a handful of return yards with an opportunity to get more if you feel like you match up good in the return game holding up some of their you know, coverage players down the field and all that stuff. Like, if you watch that first one in the game, I mean, we're close. Number 32 makes a great play and comes back and just sweeps his ankle. Um, but had that guy not made that tackle, I think we would have had something pretty special there. Um, so there's a risk to it. There's a reward to it. Um, you're balancing out both those things. You obviously don't want to put your team in a negative position. Uh, we do have a lot of confidence in Leaf back there. 
Um, I think when you guys, when you have a good player back there and a guy who's confident in himself and believes he can make something happen, you don't want to take that away from him too much either. So there's a, a fine line. Um, but I, I believe in everything he did back there. I got no problems with any of it. I think if it comes to a point where we're taking negative yardage plays and we're putting the team at risk and not getting the ball past where we think we should. But on the flip side of that, there's no guarantee that those would have been touchbacks either. So you could say, well, let the ball bounce. Well, if the ball bounces and goes sideways like our last one did in the game and we're down at the two, then we're going to be frustrated we didn't return it also. So it goes both ways ultimately. I guess today, when you don't know if it would have been a touchback or not, we could all speculate that it would be. But, you know, and then it said, well, why don't we take it at the 20 instead of the 15 or whatever? But we don't really know that. And I'm not trying to jam you up on the question. It's a good question. You know, I just, but you know, there's like a rule of thumb of when to or when you don't. Yeah, situation I, I think we felt good going into that game about returning the ball. We felt like that guy pushed the ball down the field pretty far. The average return, I think, against him was 15.6 yards or something close to that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe me remind of this story, man. I went to uh, Marine Corps Recruiting Depot in San Diego when I was out there recruiting one time. It was kind of during the 9-11 stuff. And so I went up to the front gate and I said, hey, you mind if I just come in here and just say, like, appreciate your guys' service? And the guy's like, you know, you're crazy. It's in the middle of wartime, man. Like, you ain't getting on this base. He's like, but I got one thing for you. You can go down the street. You can make a right turn. Tell them you're here to see the graduation ceremony. I was like, oh, God, that's great. So I go down there, I say, hey, I'm here to see the graduation. The guy searches my car, and lets me in. <laughs> and uh, I go and I sit in the auditorium. There's all these families, all these kids that are graduating or getting their Eagle Globe and Anchor. And uh, so I'm watching the thing and um, this guy comes up here and he's like, yeah, these kids were just up in uh, Oceanside training. It's approximately 16.23 miles north. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, approximately. <laughs> like, you know exactly what it was. <laughs> anyway, so it's approximately 15.6 yards per return. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I got my head everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Is there, um, uh, it's not too often a puncher gets a game ball. Just curious, you know, obviously they're game. Two great punts uh, in Tampa. I'm just curious about that game and then how he's played. Yeah, Fox has done a great job. Now, you guys asked me about the touchback, and we hit a touchback. So don't <laughs> ask too many questions. But uh, he's done a great job throughout the course of the year. And I think, really, all those guys on special teams have. We've covered kicks well, done a lot of positive things. we got a lot of challenges ahead of us. we got a lot of room for growth and improvement, um, certainly. But... Um, you know, I think it's reflective of how kind of the whole group has played, and I really appreciate and respect. I mean, you guys know I love our head coach here. I mean, he's an incredible guy. He loves the game of football. He loves all three phases. The fact that he, you know, looks at that and, and feels like it's an important phase of the game, I know the guys love playing for him. Um, we've got an opportunity to cover more kicks than anybody in the National Football League. Um, these guys love that. I appreciate that. Um, so anyway, uh, for him to do that for Fox, I think is reflective of the whole group and certainly for Fox himself. But, uh, you know, special teams is important. Field position is important. I think the other thing the head coach knows is that when you get in these bigger games, man, it's going to take all three phases. And at some point, you know, you're going to have to come through and uh, make some plays. So anyways, I think it's also a message to what's coming. With um, offensive or defense, we talk about like moving Aiden Hutchinson around or moving Amon Ross St. Brown around to keep the, the opposition off balance. Do you, with your, your top special teams guys, do you move them around to, to keep opposing units off balance? Yeah, it's a good question. I thought, you know, I feel like you kind of say maybe on the kickoff, you know, we moved Jerem around a little bit. Obviously, had a great tackle there, that last one we covered. Um, and we move him around a little bit. I mean, I think ultimately we're always trying to put our players in the best position we can put them in. Um, and I think you're trying to put your best players, your most productive players in positions where they can be productive. So in, in general terms, as much as we can, sure. David, I got a great appreciation for Tucker. You said their special teams are pretty good. Just be, beyond Tucker, what do they do well? And, and yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, you know, obviously the head coach has some experience on special teams. And so uh, I think, you know, they, they're going to – Come in the game, they're going to play hard, number one. Um, they're going to give you everything they got. These guys play hard on every play, um, not just one of them, not just some of them. It's not selective, um, whether it's covering a punt, covering a kickoff, a punt return. 
they have a talented returner back there deep. They got a good group of specialists, all three of them. A younger punter, but still a super talented guy. Um, first guy picked in the draft the year he came out. Clearly the top guy coming out that year. Um, their core guys, you know, their roster top to bottom. They got a bunch of guys with good skill sets, and they're all a little bit different. They got a couple inside linebackers that can really run. They're backup inside linebackers they can really run. Then they have a couple outside linebackers that maybe their strength isn't speed, but, man, they're powerful. Um, guys are strong, physical players. And I think a lot of times they got some corners who can really flat run. They got a running back, 34, who's coming there uh, last week or the last couple of weeks and played, and he can fly. Um, I think – you know, one of the biggest things on special teams and probably in this game is having having something that's elite, an elite trait, whether that's speed, power. You know, if you're small, maybe it's speed, and that makes up for your size. If you don't run as well, you're powerful. And, man, you can use that to get out of a jam. So when you're in a matchup one-on-one -on -one with someone, you know the tool you're going to. And if it's elite, man, it's going to beat the other guy no matter what. Um, even if the guy's a good player. And so they got some guys with some real elite traits on the other side of the ball um, in a lot of different areas. Um, so it'll be a great matchup. Our guys, I know they're fired up for this thing. It'll be fun. Um, and we'll get both sides very best. It'll be it'll be exciting to watch. Tucker, did you, uh, you were talking about that 66-yard kick. I mean, I know it's a painful one here, but it was, you know, history and just your appreciation. Of yeah, no, it's a, it was a great kick. Obviously, we didn't like it. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> It was a great kick. I mean, the guy's a heck of a player. I've been around him a little bit. You know, when you practice against somebody during training camp, you get a chance to be around a guy a little bit more than normal. And when I was in Philly, we worked with those guys a couple times. And uh, so I've been around him a little bit. The guy's super competitive and just ultra talented player. Um, he's very good at what he does. What was your favorite group and favorite song? Favorite band? Yeah. Favorite song? Gosh, right now I'm digging. Uh, I mean, I, I like country music probably because all the stories in country music, you know, um, especially like the old stuff was even better. Um, but I love everything. If you ask the players, I'd say louder is better than softer. Um, so anything on there, loud is pretty good. You know, even this <laughs> rap and all the rap stuff and all that. Uh, dude, I'll give you a funny story. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're having fun, man. Um, yeah, so uh, every week when I was in uh, every week when I was in Philadelphia, I used to do this thing on Friday, and uh, I would call it the Monster Matchups, and uh, I, I would kind of create this thing on my own, and then it took a life of its own, and whatever. A lot of other people got involved, but I would when I first started doing it, I would say, I'd talk about these matchups, and I would try to highlight like some of our guys going against some of these other guys make it a big deal and when i said it i would say we got some monster matchups and thanks to my dog eminem you know and i would turn on the eminem music and he'd be rapping in the background you know and i said thanks to uh, my dog eminem he'll be playing the matchup music and so we'd have him in the background now i'm like so all those guys are like hey man you had eminem come yet you know i'm like i don't even do it anymore you know <laughs> uh, so i've listened to everything um, I like country music the best. Um, I love the stories of all of them, man. But I love I love all the stories. I just read there's some stuff on Adele. I mean, God, that lady's voice incredible. Um, Whitney Houston, I put her song on this morning just for fun. So it's a large range of music. Most of it's the stories and what I I take out of the stories or the meaning behind it. Um, yeah, it was like the chariots of fire when I was a kid, man. I dreamed of getting the Olympic gold around my neck. <laughs> How we doing? Great. Word on the street is Dave Fipp is a tough act to follow today. He had some stories. Shoot. I got, no, I got nothing. I mean, I was just put out there. How about we talk about the Baltimore Ravens today, though? Huh? Can we do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, this is, a, this is a phenomenal defense. I mean, we've had, uh, this will be the second week in a row, we got on the road, tough environments, and uh, really stingy groups that we're about to face. These guys are built strong right down the middle. They got some really good defensive tackles that do a great job stuffing the run. Their backers are some of the best in the business, and then uh, their safety play is, is up there as well. 14 has really come along in his second year. He, he pops out on tape, so... Um, when you, when you have that strong interior and then they've got some good guys on the edge, they're leading the league in sacks right now. Um, 
really, really tough challenge for us here this week. So we got our work cut out for us. Dan was talking about how they they have a very different game plan for each of the opponents they face. Um, that that's something you obviously try to do on the the offensive side of the ball too, just to try to craft something that's unique for each opponent. Is is the cat and mouse game a little bit more ratcheted up and intense through the planning practice this week? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's more so than normal, but um, no, I think it, it might we might get into the game a little bit to kind of figure out how they want to attack us, at least in certain, certain spots and situations. There are some, uh, some things, some, uh, you can, you can tell that the, they've got a Fine. <laughs> Fine. Um, no, they have an identity and they know who they want to be. So they don't stray away from that. It's a physical group that shows up week in and week out. Um, but yeah, in terms of scheme they they mix it up pretty good week to week. Um, coordinator does a great job. You know, Brian Duker has worked with him in the past. He kind of calls him a uh, Wink Martindale protege and uh, and clone. So it'll be uh, it'll be a challenge. You know, Wink's Wink's a tough one to go against. We saw him there in training camp. So a lot of similarities. Um, he's got his own flair and style on it, but it's uh, it, it'll be a good challenge. They have one of the the best red zone defenses in the league. Um, it's an area where Tampa had some success against you guys last week. Just as you continue forward without David. What is the, the biggest challenge that they present inside the 20 uh, this week? Yeah, uh, truthfully, haven't even focused in on red zone yet. You know, just our, our weekly process. That'll be a, something that we we dive into more tonight um, as we formulate that that plan. But they, they are, I believe, they're ranked second in the league right now. Uh, last week, we were 0 for 2. So I know we have to get a lot better there and certainly take a peek at what they're doing really well for us. Um, you know, last week wasn't wasn't up to snuff. You know, wait, we get the ball. The defense does a heck of a job with the turnover, and we're in inside the red zone. We don't come away with the touchdown. That's that's really disappointing. So we got to hold up our end when our defense is playing playing that well. Uh, snap motion is is up across the league this year. Just ball being snapped while guys are still moving. You guys are using it um, significantly more than you you had uh, mm-hmm. in previous years. I'm just wondering. Philosophically, like what, what's the value of that? Why, do, why are we seeing an increased usage of that in the, in the league this year? You know, it's, uh, I think it, it, if you know how defenses are going to handle it, you can certainly use it to your advantage. Um, now, that, now that more tape has, is coming out, you can kind of see how defenses are, are dealing with it. And so I think that's where, um, you'll see more offenses start to use it, if, if that's a good answer. Because there's more tape. As a copycat league, they see it more, so you can you can address it. Um, obviously, Miami, uh, San Fran, a few of those teams, they've been at the at the forefront of that that movement. Um, I told you back back when when Dan and I were in Miami, we, we did a little bit of it, not as much as we're doing now. But it certainly helps our guys create some access at times on the perimeter or puts them in some tough situations to communicate. This goes back a little bit to what Justin asked about the cat and mouse game, but you know, and Dan said that on one hand, right, maybe a team tries to take away the, the big shot plays that you guys have. Maybe one team, you know, wants to stop the run. If you're a defensive coordinator looking at your offense, what do you what do you try to take away? Like what do you guys what do you think you do? I, I don't know. Play? I think that's that's what was encouraging about last week is they did make us one dimensional. We did not run the ball well at all. Um, number of reasons for that, that that we're looking to clean up. But I thought our guys responded really well. We we had to start throwing. Heck, we had four, uh, fourth quarter. We're up by a couple scores. And we knew we wanted to produce a time-consuming drive. And we had to do it through the air. And third down conversions was a big part of that. But Jared was able to find some guys. We were able to stay in bounds. And, and I think milk seven plus minutes off the clock there to, to help put the, uh, put the game away. So. We are versatile. We're, we can shape. We can go whatever direction we need to go because we have the players that, that can do it. Feel more complete than ever before. Yeah, no doubt. Yes, yeah, since I've been here, sure. Yep, you're five for me, so no, no doubt. What is the the challenge? I guess you face with the the running back depth right now. Um, you know whether Craig or, or Gibbs gets medically cleared. I mean, just how how difficult is that that balance right now uh, for your offense? Yeah, I, uh, you know they'll get plenty of opportunities here in practice to, to get the experience they need for the game. Um, Demo's a major blow. He's, he was a bell cow for us, but 
like we've had so often already this year in the, in the receiver room and the O-line room, someone will step up and rise to the occasion. There's no doubt about it. Who gives you that confidence just because you've done it so many times before? That's yeah, crazy. yeah, it, it's, that's really kind of since Coach Campbell came in, we're a very resilient group and as, a, as an offense, as a team, and guys tend to rise to the occasion when they get an opportunity. You've been with Goff for a long time now. I'm just curious, Ben, where you've seen him evolve the most during his time in the you know, the, the biggest growth I've seen from Jared has really been more in the drop back game um, since he got here. He was known as a movement and play action guy when we got him, but his, uh, his ability to diagnose defenses, regulate the protection, make sure he's, he's covered, understand where his issues could potentially be, he's grown there in the last few years. Um, and he has complete control of our offense right now. Khalif uh, is a guy in kind of just like you alluded to is, is one of the guys who's calling no matter what the circumstances are. I'm just curious uh, what he brings to that receiver room from a, a leadership standpoint and just as, you know, someone who can kind of help you effectively communicate what you're looking for and from younger receivers. Who was that again? Khalif. Khalif. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Um, Steady Eddie. He's the same guy every day showing up. Very professional. Uh, he, he's one of the most selfless guys I've been around. In this league, and I, I think, I think when you when you start winning games like we're doing, guys are uh, they, they all want to be involved and have a have a hand in it. And he's just a guy. Hey, however I can help, however I can help, whatever it is, is it blocking? Is it uh, give me a punt return? You know, is it a deep ball? Whatever it is, I just want to want to help this team, help this offense. He's got that mindset and mentality, and. And uh, really, it's it carries through for that whole room. And you guys uh, have a pretty good linebacker group here, playing against a pretty good linebacker core this week. You know, obviously, Roquan and McQueen. Um, when you play against a, a team that has really good linebackers, what does that do to an offense? What, are, what sort of challenges does that present? Yeah, uh, it, it, they're different styles every week, but this particular group, they are just as physical as they are. Uh, excellent athletes that can run sideline to sideline. So. Normally, when you have the, the super athletic second level defenders that run side, we'll, we'll go downhill on them. Well, this group compensates really well for that. They'll come and they'll fill gaps and, and pull you off your double teams quickly. So um, it, it's challenging. It's, it's challenging. There's, there's no doubt. We'll, we'll see if we can uh, hopefully make, it, make their eyes go different directions, you know, to slow them down. But this group's as good as we've seen all year, really, the last few years. Yeah, I know a lot of times, right, we talk about the pass rusher and the cornerback, but sometimes that linebacker. Today's NFL gets overlooked, just you know, media-wise, I guess a little bit. So I don't know if that was a special. When you play against a team like that, yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's not just in the uh, in the run game either. In uh, in coverage, these guys are, are both excellent. Excellent. They they keep nickel on the field at all times. They have no problem taking a linebacker and putting him on a tight end, and they do a heck of a job doing it. You saw going from where James Williams had a big play in that Billy. I know you've been one of the guys really challenged him to you know, come up to speed and you know, get him get him on par with you guys, but. What do you think that definitely has confidence moving forward for you guys to actually see that come alive, you know, that deep ball um, and that's the offense as well? No, it was, it was great. It was great because that's, that's two weeks in a row that he's practiced really, really well. And what, do we, what happens, a big play shows up on Sunday for us. So we just need another really good week of practice. And maybe the results will be the same again this week. You, you never know. But we just got to keep stacking good days and good weeks on top of each other. And, and good things will end up resulting from it. I think they've got 11, 11 different guys with a sack. Uh, how important is just identifying pre-snap what, what they're trying to do against an opponent like this? It's, it's, it's everything. It's everything. They've got uh, they've got a heck of a blitz package here on on third down. Um, the coordinator does a phenomenal job with that, and, they, and they're really well coached. They have been for years, and uh, I know he was there before, went to Michigan for a year, and came back. But I mean, it's it's. Uh, it's the Baltimore Ravens, you know, it's, it's every time you play them. So it's good. I thought it was a really good performance by our players. Um, they're executing at a pretty high level at this point. Um, the coaching staff is doing a really good job of uh, coaching their guys, getting them to understand exactly uh, the vision of what we're trying to create um, game in and game out. And a lot of that is showing up. Uh, the one thing I do know is belief and trust is a powerful thing. And, uh, and those things are really showing up with, uh, with our players.
of an offense is this versus Roman a couple of years ago and what, what Moncton does there now? Uh, obviously, you see um, they're trying to use Lamar to sit in the pocket and throw the ball. Um, and he has those capabilities. Um, I mean, that run game is still that run game. I mean, it's still one of the better ones in the league uh, with him also as a runner. So, um, listen, we have, a, we have our job cut out for us this game. Uh, we know that. Uh, staff knows that. Uh, the players know that. Um, but, again, I expect us to execute at a high level. Playing to the defense's hands a little bit. I mean, wouldn't you rather keep Lamar in the pocket? Um, I think any team would rather do that, but you also have to know that he's a growing thrower in this league. So uh, there's a number of ways that he can hurt you. I mean, this guy was a former MVP, and he was there for a reason. Um, so we're fully aware of that. He's still making the same sort of plays in the run game, even if they're not quite as designed. I well, that's not going to change. You don't take a superpower from a player when that's what he does best. So I expect him to continue to do that. How's that offense kind of evolved? They spent some money at the receiver position. You know, they got Adele. They spent the yeah. first round around the say. How have you kind of seen that group continue to grow? Well, again, you start to see the maturation of, of Lamar being able to sit in the pocket and throw the ball. So um, if you're going to go that route, you might as well get him weapons to be able to throw to. Um, and those guys are, are pretty explosive. And we all know Dell. I mean, he's been around for a while, so we know what he brings to the table. When you look at uh, Zay Flowers, you look at Bateman. Um, obviously, we have Andrews. We know what he brings to the table. So he's surrounded by a good amount of explosive players. Um, and we're fully aware of those players. When you talk about shutting down Lamar's run threat, it becomes an all-11 problem. Who says shut it down? <laughs> when, when I don't think contain, anybody can just shut him down. When you're trying to contain it, it's all a problem, right? Like all Absolutely. 11 it's 11 guys that's on the field. So um, last time you guys played him, he, he likes to utilize the deep ball. He uses yep. his threat of the legs to, to set up the, the deep ball. So what's the balance for your deeper defenders there? And We're just going to play defense. We're going to play defense. So whatever that, that brings, that's what we're going to do. And our plans is to, to contain him. Um, our plan is to not let the ball go over our head. And whatever we do as far as practice, that's what we're going to do in the game. When you say belief and trust, where does that stem from? Where does it stem from? Um, to me, everything starts top down, and that starts with our head coach. Um, and then it goes down to the staff, to the assistant coaches. And then we try to impart that to the players. And then you go out there and practice with each other. Um, and then you start to see players in the right place at the right time. And then that transitions over to game day. And once you start continue to continue to do that, I mean, that's when belief and trust starts to happen. Just how good a football is Alex playing right now? Um, Alex is doing a good job. What opportunities have been given for Jack Campbell? How do you assess his increased role um, what doing out there? We said this from the beginning, that player's going to play because he's a good player. That's the reason why we drafted him. So, um, we're going to continue to develop him. Um, this is the NFL. It's totally different than college, and he understands that. Um, is he perfect? No, uh, but no player is perfect. But he's doing a really good job for us. Over the first two weeks, Patrick Mahomes, Geno Smith, they had moderate success getting outside the pocket. But over the last four, four weeks, granted they're different quarterbacks, you've been able to hold guys under 12 yards scrambling outside the pocket. Is there anything from those last couple of games that you can take and you know apply to containing a guy like Lamar? Talking about two guys that's playing at a high level. Um, and just like I said about Lamar, those two guys you just talked about are going to make some plays. This is the NFL. Um, there's a lot of good players in this league. I don't know for a fact, but I think Geno just signed a huge deal. It's the reason why you signed those guys to that. And we all know what, um, what Mahomes is. Um, so, man, we do everything we can to contain these guys. But the reality is they're going to make some plays. I don't know why everybody thinks that this is – Pop one in football, and those guys, you could just stop them. Um, but we're going to do our best to do that and contain them. Coach, when you got here, Will had just finished, Will Harris had just finished year two. Yeah. How had, where has he grown, grown the most over the last three seasons? He's grown mentally, um, first and foremost, because we ask a lot of that player. Um, and he's played every position uh, that you can imagine in the back end. Uh, and that's why he's so valuable to us. Um, and listen, I, I'll be the first to say sometimes I take that guy for granted. Same way when I had P.J. Williams in New, in New Orleans. Because there are some times where they don't have any reps in practice at playing a certain spot. And when something happens, like you say, hey, Will, get in and do this. And I know for a fact that he can do it. Um, 
And man, that is that is a great feeling to have when you know you have a player that's going to study every position on the field, and when something happens, you can you can insert him in. He does a good job for us at that. Could get Josh Paschal back this week. Um, I think if I remember right, he played pretty good that first game before he got hurt. Just what what can he add to the defense at this point? How good would he be? Uh, really good run player. Um, really good pocket pusher. Um, draft that player to do exactly that. So once he gets back, we expect him to do those things. He was the guy that you said you were prepared to give him a bigger role, but now that he's missed four weeks, do you, do you have to kind of ease him back in? I think we do that with every player that's coming off an of injury um, because you have to get used to the speed of the game also. So um, listen, he'll play. Um, can't tell you how much he'll play, but he'll play. Um, so we just keep him on the field. Aaron, you, you played it, now you coach it. Just what it's like if when you have a quarterback like Jackson break contained, you're in the secondary trying to decide whether you're going to come up, try to tackle him, and then he whistles it over your head. Just what goes through your mind when you're back there trying to deal with a guy like him? Well, first off, um, I hope the guys doesn't coverage stay in coverage. Um, so the ball shouldn't go over their head. Uh, and the guys that's, that's actually tracking him is playing leverage football because he is a dynamic runner. I mean, we all know that. Um, it's kind of hard for one person to really tackle him. And when you do that, I mean, that's, that's a pretty damn good job to be able to do that. But um, the reality is you need more people around that player. And every team tries to do that. And even when you have that many players, he can escape, you know, every now and then. So when you're deep, you stay deep and you protect deep. Um, when you're around that player, man, you play leverage football, knowing that you have your buddy inside of you or outside of you to help you as far as containing that player, and we expect to do that. Yeah, trade deadline's like 10 days away. I know the decisions are you know, made at a higher level than you, but... Why are you about to ask me that? <laughs> well, I just want to know what your defense. Do you, does your defense need We play defense. I coach defense. All that, I mean, that's... Is there anything you feel like you're lacking that you don't have on defense? Right um, what I'm lacking? Um... Coach defense, man, <laughs> and that's all that I worry about. So, I mean, the head coach up here not long ago, wasn't he? Did you ask him? Not today. He didn't, Jordan didn't talk today. Yes, sir. Okay, well, he'll be up here pretty soon. <laughs> you ask him that. At the start of training camp, Derek Barnes just talked about his reinvention of himself and his dedication to being a better player this season, and now he's one of the leaders on tackles this season. Yeah. Is, can you talk about your pleasure with how he's um, played so far? Well, this is – a player that um, I think we've all talked about from the beginning of the season, um, really in training camp, to how he, um, he, he immersed himself as far as understanding the game of football. Um, he's always going to take care of his body. That's just who Barnes is. Um, but, man, I would tell you who really, really helped is him being side by side with Alex. Like, that was a huge help for him. Alex has seen a lot of ball. I've been around Alex for a long time, so I know what he brings to the table. Um, but for him to impart those things mentally to help Barnes was huge. Um, and then you see that throughout that, that linebacker room. I mean, that's what's so special about that room. And th those guys are not trying to say, man, I'm trying to do this so I can stay ahead of you and I can get playing time. Man, those guys, like, teach and coach each other for the most part. Um, we know Shep does a good job with those guys in there. So um, it's a special room. Um, Barnes is a special player, just like the rest of those guys. Um, we expect him to continue to improve as a player as he goes on. Those two have been really close since they got here, since Derek got here, Alex and, and Derek. It wasn't buddies. Yeah, yeah. What, I mean, what is it about, you know, um, either Alex being a leader or Derek being willing to, you know, Well, I think the first person. thing is those guys in the same room and they're around each other so much. And that happens in this league. Um, just guys get attached. Uh, and, and there's some, something about that, that that's a common ground. I mean, they're both, uh, they're both family men. Um, they both kind of think the same uh, to some degree. Um, and they both want to be really, really good football players. You've been around Alex for a long time. Does yeah. it make you happy to kind of see him getting his flowers in, in recent weeks? And um, for his I mean, we've been giving him his flowers for a long time. I mean, that's you guys. That's just not giving him his flowers. So, and I don't think he cares. I think the only thing he cares about is his teammates, uh, his coaches, and I his family and how he's going about doing things. So um, I've always known what he's going to bring to the table. That's why he's been here. That's why we re-signed him.